Yo, Jonathan here. This is a video about struggling, and I know I've gone through my own set of health challenges and obstacles recently. That is not what this video is about, though. Specifically, it's aimed at creating creators in general, but also at the same time in the tech space, the pressures of being consistent, the analytic side, being creatively happy, which is something I think I've tried to put first, but also knowing at the same time that it's probably going to be detrimental performance-wise or on paper. So if you are struggling or have struggled, hopefully this can help in some way, shape, or form. This is something that I wanted to make and talk about for the better part of at least a year now to the point where six months ago I actually sat down and talked about this with my good friend Judner, AKA Your Average Consumer. Honestly, I, I feel like the biggest thing for me has just always been uh, not knowing when a video will tank, you know? That, it's it's been really difficult to you know, you, you, you pour time into something, uh, you know, you, you think you, you're putting out the best version of this video that you can. And then the algorithm says, yeah, bro, this is not the one. It's not the one. This is not the one uh, that we want people to see. Uh, and, and, and that can take a toll. And the fact that that carries over uh, and it's it sets the momentum for the next one. It's been fascinating to watch things grow and develop over the years and to see how things shift to the point now where even the audience is aware and programmed to pay attention to subscribers, to views, and even to an extent use that as an attack. Before it's like, oh bro, you're ugly. But now it's like, bro, you're ugly and you got no views. <laughs> I think people lose sight of the fact that we're all people behind this. The human, the human side of it, yeah. It's simple in practice to not let performance or views get to you. But as a creator, the way things are wired, if you're hanging out with other creators, 90% of the talk is about analytics. And as helpful and as useful as analytics can be, at the same time, it's also exhausting. Sometimes you get, you get lost in the grind, you know? Everyone kind of just, they, they glamorize the grind, you know? And it's great, it's great to have that dedication and, you know, but it is physically and mentally taxing sometimes where it's, it, it, it hits way harder than some people might think, you know? You think it's just, oh, they're just making a video, but it's, it's work. You then have YouTube, which gives you really useful tools. And there's no denying when you pop off and you get that one to 10 and confetti, that it feels good, but at the same time, when you get smacked with that 10 of 10 or that nine of 10, and YouTube is saying, hey, you kind of suck today, it's hard to not let it consume you. It's easy to feel like you, you, you're you in a slump, you know? And when you're in a slump where it's like, man, people don't like my stuff anymore, you know? Like, what's, what's happening right now? And I, I think that part is tough, um, just kind of feeling like, like the people, like, you know, because when you're building your audience, you, you know, you feel super connected with them and you're, you're getting to a point where it's like, yes, a lot of people are liking the content. This is, I'm on, I'm on track. But once you get that shift in momentum going the opposite way, uh, it just, it's, it's really draining. And it's, it's just, it's just, it's just really difficult to try and put your best foot forward with your content and then just, not and just not hit what your 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 goals uh for whatever reason whether it's the algorithm or maybe people falling out of love with you i don't know but it that's that's tough now i think a lot of creators in the tech space can probably relate to the fact that things feel in general very toxic over the last few years to the point where you're not really allowed to like anything and that's with almost like everything right people love to see you climbing and you know getting to the top they they're down for the journey but once you get but once you get there they're like dude you kind of suck now you <laughs> you, you shill it's like what yeah yeah you you, you like, literally helped me get here i appreciate yeah it. yeah yeah bro we did this like you were you were saying go get it man and i got it and now you're like why'd you get it <laughs> yeah 
getting back to then the pressure on views and performance because of that, especially in the tech space, things need to be edgier and honest because trashing on something, that's going to get the click. So because of those aforementioned things, I've found myself in multiple times over the past two years probably where I've recorded something and never uploaded it. In a lot of ways, once you put it out into the internet, it becomes not yours. So I think at the same time, it's also been a way for me to enjoy that tech without the noise. Now with that on a YouTube level, that's not a good idea. I think it was a conscious choice on my end, knowing that it's probably going to hurt things on a performance level. But again, that was kind of at the forefront of my goals. One, to be creatively happy, but also to find peace in not obsessing over numbers. Now for me, alongside all of that, something that I've struggled with is the music journey and path that I've been on because in the back of my mind and in my heart, I knew that if I put my head down and just worked, that it's gonna end up being the thing that makes me the most creatively happy, but at the same time, it's also gonna fuel the tech side of things in a way that I couldn't have done without. During the process though, man, you have moments of doubt and questioning yourself and just asking, am I crazy? and wrong for doing that. I've had people that were close to me just kind of look at me and question, why aren't you putting everything into the tech channel? You're losing out on views and money. What is wrong with you? Again, for me though, the end game isn't about views or money. And I know that's probably to a detriment of myself in terms of performance or the YouTube game. But if you're watching this and you do have a goal, I would say believe in yourself when it feels like no one else does. Know that it's gonna be challenging. You're gonna have good days and bad days and days where you question yourself and ask yourself, is this worth doing? The one piece of advice I could give with that is try and take the step back and look at the progress from a bigger view because when you're dissecting things day to day, it feels small and it feels like there's so much more you could be doing. But when you take that step back and look at things from a bigger perspective, more often than not, you'll see how much you've accomplished. I think a turning point for me this year was a video that I did on the Dolby Atmos setup. It was such a challenge in the sense of the amount of time that went in to get everything done. Not only the time that went into the video, but the research, the installation. I just wanted to make sure things were done at the highest level because I knew that video was gonna be the one that propelled me into the next way of making things. At the same time though, knowing all the time that I took off, knowing the videos and the momentum that I missed out on doing all that, you have that fear in the back of your mind asking yourself, man, what if I put this up? What if I put all this hard work into something and it bombs? I kind of told myself, if this gets 100,000 views, that's my goal, I'll be happy. And I know that sounds wild, but there are people, especially on this channel, who will see 100,000 views and use that as an attack. In actuality, 100,000 people watching something is kind of crazy, but again, because of how things are wired down to performance or analytics, sometimes that's not seen as enough. Again, it's not that performance or views or analytics aren't important because they are to agree. I think my message I'm trying to get across is that ultimately you gotta find balance. There's nothing wrong with having an alternate thumbnail or two or title, but when you get to the point where you have 10, 15, and you're just obsessing, it's gonna make you lose your mind. In general, I'm excited to make videos and tech videos specifically, and hopefully we can all find that joy and that fun that I think was there early on. Cause even with you, like me and you, when you used to come right. out with like the great looking videos, I'm like, oh, I need, I need to say, I need to get a shot that'll make John say like, yo, how'd you get that shot, man? You know, but that's what it is, right? Like, it's like when I see something good, I just want to be better in like, yeah. in the sense of like, it makes me want to work my ass off. Like, how can I do that? It, 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 it was a, it was a fun time to just be able to just make content. And everyone's just like, oh, okay. I see. You. Damn. Like not to get like a little knot in my throat, but like, I appreciate you and, uh, you know, throughout this whole thing like you've always been a great friend and brother and like anytime any youtube shit pops up like you're always there and i appreciate it yeah absolutely man i feel listen i feel absolutely the same i attribute a lot of where i am to just being friends with you and you sharing knowledge with me when i didn't know Jack Diddley squat about cameras and whatnot, man. You were, you've always been like an awesome friend and resource. And if there's anything I can ever do, you know, I'm always here, always.
So hopefully this helped in some way. Thank you guys for being awesome. If you missed it, I got a giveaway going on a very cool headset linked up here and down below. This is Jonathan and I will catch you guys later.